James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, July the 12th, 2014. Can you dig that? I'm digging it, man. I'm digging it. Are you digging it, though? I'm digging July. Time flies. Well, the seasons fly too fast. Yeah. Especially yep. when you're getting older. Yeah. Well. Welcome. That's a deep subject. Well. Yeah. Hold on. I think you set a record for the for the uh, the quickest joke during our show. I mean the earliest joke, earliest joke. I always like to use proper grammar and spelling, <coughs> as opposed to those speaking of jokes. those nikum poop tea baggers that say America. This is this is well they would never say this, but I, I'm saying it. This is we are living in the oligarch states of America. And the, we love it. The oligarchy. We keep voting for them. States of America. America. We keep voting against our own interests. That's right. All the time. All right. Let me get the formalities out of the way. <clears throat> yeah, then what? I want to speak about that new movie by Danish and D'Souza or whatever the hell okay, his name is. Okay, no problem. For a moment. Okay. Welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. Um, I'm your host James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and uh, we are coming to you, <coughs> myself and my co-host that I will introduce, uh, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, I will now pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 and the one and only Pope of the Internet. Oh God. With my authentic bosun's whistle. <coughs> Pipe him aboard. <coughs> Our um, hard-hitting truth uh, starship. Newsletter oh. Censored. Our uncensored hard-hitting truth starship. Oh. Newsletter Censored. Welcome aboard the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Dry. You feel dry? I feel dry. You mean like a sun-dried tomato or a... No. Or a piece of bacala or beef jerky or... Trot. Your trot. In the trot. I had a cup of water with my uh, vitamins after breakfast. I hope you put a tablespoon... And I had a cup of tea. ...of apple cider vinegar in that cold water. No, I just, uh, no, because I have to rinse my mouth later with it. Okay, no, but I mean, it, it's, it's, right it's very it. healthy to... Acid in there. It's very healthy to ingest... Yes, yes, ...the yes, raw, yes. unfiltered, organic apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. The mommy, yeah. The, the mother mommy. of all vinegars. <laughs> because that's the one that's the most medicinal. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article about... Just how has great, many uses. Just how great apples are. And I so I wrote down, I typed, uh, well, kick it up of several notches and, and uh, use apple cider vinegar instead but, of eating apples. But. It's a fermented product. It's the skins but, where the nutrition is. But isn't, well, of course the skins are extremely valuable mm -hmm. nutritionally and yeah, but it, when they when they juice the apples to make apple cider vinegar, isn't the pulp? Doesn't the pulp consist of the skins? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. All I know is that if it, Gary No would, uh, 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 you know, when making juice, would make the the skins part of it. That's why it's important to uh, get yourself a ninja, which is like a, ninja. a which is like a Vitamix. Except the ninja has blades on multi levels on the bottom, midway, and top, so you don't get anything uh, uh, packing down or, or, or uh, caking up at the bottom. You know how a blender always has some residue at the bottom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that gets that doesn't get mixed. Mm -hmm. Like if you're putting a, a let's say you're putting a whey. 
protein powder or soy protein powder and making a drink like a smoothie and you always have a, a, a bit of powder yep. or something clumping clumping there you go that's clumping. the word I'm looking for yeah. at the bottom of the blender well with the ninja I mean this is not a paid advertisement but at the, at, with the ninja the blades happen to be at, at the at a very low level as well as mid-range mm -hmm. and upper levels so you don't have to stop the, the unit and get a chopstick or, or something and loosen it up and then start it again you don't have to do that mm -hmm. so but speaking of food I might have get might as well get get this out of the way a good rule of thumb if you want to eat healthy is never eat a food with a commercial because if if the food has a commercial most likely it's corporate and because they they're the only ones that can really afford a TV commercial or a magazine commercial and if it's corporate food it's crap it's toxic so that's a good rule of thumb my my second comment about food is that I notice that the very best quality supermarket foods are by brands that you never see advertised ever and it, it, it blows away the advertised foods in your, your typical supermarket. I'll give, it a, I'll give you an example. They're, they opened up in um, an Aldi store in our town. It's a chain. It's, it's a company from Illinois. From what I understand, it, it might be German. German, oh. yes. Okay. The Aldi's, their own brand, uh, 12 grain bread. Okay, it's a large, heavy loaf, and in my opinion, it's just as good, if not better, than Arnold's, and it's only a dollar eighty-nine per loaf. The uh, you know you, you've seen advertisements for I can't believe it's not butter or Smart Beat. Well, all these has their brand, only ninety-nine cents a tub, and it has better ingredients, and it's also trans fat and hydrogenated oil free and low fat with no sugar zero sugar I mean this goes back to my first comment when you have commercials it's corporate when you have corporate you have nothing but trouble and, and bad news so just use this common sense if you're not um, if you're if you're not a nutritionally oriented person and you don't research about nutrition and you don't study it just stay away from foods that have a commercial have an advertisement that's all uh, I want to start off by saying uh, this is according to the um, economic policy Institute hey. a minimum wage pays just fifteen thousand dollars per year if you never take a single day off and okay and uh, the Economic Policy Institute also stated that a single parent with one child can't even pay for basic financial needs now that's below the poverty level of fifteen thousand dollars I, I believe. think that's too much I don't know about that the poverty level is like 21 22,000 something yeah for uh yeah, but I'm talking about that. I don't think the minimum wage adds up to fifteen thousand. It might. It might be below that. It might be below. Oh, that's pathetic. Of course it is. Now, yeah. speaking of the minimum. If wage, you don't take a day off. The minimum wage in Germany. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, Germany never really had a minimum wage because they didn't need it because the government, the corporation, and et cetera, et cetera and the labor work together. They work together. Teamwork, man. Yes. To come up with things that it's are good. The same for way with Scandinavian countries? They work. I'm going to get to that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, the minimum wage in Germany is eleven dollars and change. Bare minimum. Okay. Bare minimum. In Denmark, the minimum wage is twenty five dollars. That explains why McDonald's employees in Denmark gets they start with twenty one dollars an hour. There you go. And their health care, they don't have to worry about 
affording the doctor. And Denmark is just a socialist country, take 50% of your taxes. Oh, blah, 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 but look, blah, blah. Well, look at how much you get in exactly. these countries. That's what you got to look at. How much you get. How much you get in return. Going to the doctor and the security, anytime you want. Huh? Security. Security, a good, a good. You don't have to live in a stinking tenement somewhere. Right, you know? in a damn shelter, a homeless shelter, or whatever. And also, your retirements are are adequate. Six weeks vacation. You got time off when you have a baby. About come on. Oh, so come it, on. what about that uh, that old uh, saying that the, the proof is in the pudding? Isn't there a lot of proof with socialism? Yeah, but that positive proof. Republicans are ideologues. Ideologues. They don't care about proof. Because they they're greedy. They care about themselves, their own pockets. They they care about themselves. That's why they don't. Well, want it's the old red scare. Those things are they're socialists. They're communists. Just like what the, the hell, just man? like the idiots, uh, the same morons feel that a fertilized egg. Is a uh, is a human being? Uh, did you did you see that banner I put up? It was a joke. Uh, it was a uh, a man walking out of um, um, an X-rated adult store, and women were protesting and say, with signs that said, "An, an, an erection is a hum is a human life, or or, or masturbation is um, abortion is abortion. You're you're killing killing human life, day, right? Yeah, yeah." Something, something of that nature. I saw it, yeah. Yeah, like it, it, it's kind of, uh, they're making fun of the right-wing zealots that insist that a fertilized egg it, or an embryo that breeds like a fish is a uh, human being. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're going one step further. Well, if you if you jerk off, you're, you're killing all the sperm. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, uh, when you have an ejaculation, uh, there are like 200 million sperm involved there, mm -hmm. and only one can penetrate the ovum. And there are like 400, 500 ovum I mean, there's in no a woman. There's no competition to get in the ovum? It's always one? Oh, there's competition. They got to swim like crazy and this, that, and the other thing. Some can't but make it. But when one gets there, Nobody else can pan it. So that, it's only one. So it's a race. It's a race. So that that ensures that the strongest sperm spermatozoa. Yeah, and if they're if they're not as strong, and they do happen to penetrate, females are born. The feminists will not be too happy to hear that. I know, but it happens, I know, it's a fact. I know. It happens to be a fact. But I that's mean, the you know, way it is. That's the but way the it is. But the point I'm trying to make is there is so much waste in that stuff. What's well, the numbers game? So that's that's abortion, isn't it? Yeah. Well, All automatically. Mother nature. Mother nature. Aborts. Uh, 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 what about the the predatory animals and the prey? You know, it's, it's sad to watch, but that's that's the way. Well, it's set up. Let's look at it as from the Bible. God, the God that became Jesus, he was in the garden there, and he creates this human being out of the dust of the ground. Right. And the human being is lying there. I don't know if there was a gurney involved or whatever, but he's lying there, inanimate has no energy, has no breath of life, has nothing. Same as Frankenstein. Until the jolt of electricity hit Frankenstein's body, except, he did not live. Except Adam didn't require the bolts in his no. neck. Adam required the breath of life from God mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before he became a living soul, you see. So, spermatozoon and ovum meet at conception. Hello, hello. There is not life. Glad to meet you. At, at, at conception, there is parasite. The parasite, baby, fetus, embryo, lives off the mother. That is true. The mother's body. It does not live of and by itself. So the, the, the Republicans don't treat 
that what, as a, uh, a homeless person on welfare? It's all a ploy, political ploy, okay? Because once that baby is born, they don't want to have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Well, I, I, from what I understand, um, in the um, within the uh, progressive uh, circle on, on the internet, the people are well aware of the hypocrisy of the Republicans in terms of valuing the uh, the fetus. I'm sorry, the embryo fetus above uh, a fertilized egg above a child that's already born. Correct. Unless the child is born with a big silver spoon in its mouth. Look what they're doing with those immigrants that are coming over the border. Uh, Mr. McCain wants to put ankle bracelets on them to further humiliate them. Yeah. They, they're, they're these already, are refugees. They're already poor and have nothing, and they're desperate. And he wants to humiliate them more. In other words, it's like what you told me. What the Bible says: if a man is starving and he steals a loaf of bread, do not persecute him or arrest him. Give him. He sh you should give him food. Yeah, well, this is cold. this is similar to the refugees coming well, over the border. We have treaties. We have treaties that say we are supposed to take care of them when they are refugees. They're supposed to take care of the, the veterans coming home from the oh war. Oh my God! Bernie Sanders will tell you that. I mean, I mean, it, look. The more you really analyze and study Republicans, the more you realize that they are much farther away from the God of the Bible than us. Uh, progressive, liberal, secular humanists. We are much closer to the God of the Bible than Republicans. This, it, this is proof. Talk about proof that's in the pudding. I mean, it, it's so evident. And, 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 and it's also evident that, that both parties, unfortunately, are guilty of wickedness. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm wrong, but Hillary Clinton is, is uh, in favor of GMOs. Monsanto GMOs, and she's the Democrat. Yes, well, and, uh, if you... And John if Kerry you, wants to crucify uh, Edward Snowden, and he's a Democrat. If you read the history of, like, since the, the Industrial Revolution, Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. and progressives and, 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 and conservatives and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, once upon a time, way back then, uh, there, were, there were conservatives and there were progressives in both parties. In both parties. Both parties. Then there were populists. The populist party. And they got crushed. Maybe they assumed the uh, liberal versus conservative roles later on as a way to get more votes. Well, the, por the point of it is... Democrats do get more things, votes. Yeah. Progressive, liberal, etc. They were sucked up into the Democratic Party. But not everybody, not every Democrat is a progressive. Nor a liberal. They are corporatists. Just like the conservatives. Two sides of the same coin. They are for business over the average Joe. Because they, it's as simple as because that. Because they perhaps owe favors to the corporations that well, give them course, money? Well, of course. Guess who gives them money? For the campaigns? But, at one time, taxes in this country, the top tax rates, were 91%, 94%, 77%, blah, 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 in both parties voted for that stuff. Yeah, Eisenhower, the last of the good guy Republicans, had a very high tax rate on the rich. However, the rich never paid those top rates because of loopholes and etc. So they were there, but they weren't being paid. So the problem is loopholes, and they, they get loopholes put in because they pay off the politicians. They, 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 they pay people off. Because so, the whole thing is corrupt. It's all corrupt. That's right. Well, corrupt. the Soviet Union corrupted the, the original Karl Marx uh, form of government, didn't they? Well, when it became totalitarian, obviously. Probably. When did, when did it start? With Stalin? 
17, I think. Soviet. It, it took for, you, about four years. It was fairly decent, and then we got, you know, Lenin and Stalin and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the Gorbachev. What? Well, not Gorbachev. What was that well, with, with the shoe? Uh, uh, Nikita Khrushchev. Nikita Khrushchev. The Cold War. The, he's Cold, the Cold War, etc. He's the Cold War uh, yeah. chancellor, or whatever. Yeah, you know, but that was totalitarian. That whole. So the problem. Soviet the Union. problem is the the evils of human nature. Exactly. The wish to control other people. And of course, greed. Is well, it? isn't that form of greed when you want to control somebody well, else? The lust for power. <laughs> It, it involves money and control. Exactly. Control and money. Exactly. I mean, um, well, before we, we begin, I want to say one thing here. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> Ted Cruz. Oh, no. The douchebag faced Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz that looks like he wears lipstick. Hmm. Wants to sell off and privatize America's national parks. Of course. So the government wouldn't be burdened with taking care of the national parks. Oh, you you don't think that uh, there's some there's a lot of profit to be made by these Republicans in Washington by selling off the national parks? Well, that's what they want. I I I I, I bring up. The ISP situation. Really, internet, yeah. It's the same thing. Right. Yeah. See? Yeah. When they privatize those things. That's why we have the the the, the worst out of thirty countries in the world. Uh, damn right. You the worst right. internet speed. Hong Kong has the best. Hong Kong. I'm not shocked. How's the European Union's ISP? It's uh, up there, but uh, it's below. It's below Hong Kong. Hong Kong is pretty fast. Well, damn fast. I'm not happy with my uh, 100 uh, kilobytes per second. Kilobytes, I mean, megabytes. Yeah. Well, they tell me uh, my my speed is actually good. The, the company, the ISP, uh, optimum um, here in the Northeast. I don't uh, think so because I believe that 101 is the best speed. Optimum. They have three speeds. I believe 101 yeah. is the best. Well, before I forget, ah. I just want to remind you people that are we are still winky dinked or su and suckered. That was Mr. Haney from Green Acres used to say, <laughs> "You ain't got a winky dink, me, Mr. Douglas." <laughs> you people that still fall for the, uh, the lies concerning trickle-down economics. There was never trickle-down economics. What it is, is siphon up to the top 20%, right? Economics. Siphon up to the 20% economics. No trickling down. No pistoling. It's actually pistoling down from, okay, you're, they're urinating on us, but it's, there, mm -hmm. there, there's no trickle-down. It's siphon up to the fat cats. This is a siphon, as you well know, because you see this every week. All right, siphon up economics. Got it? No Got trickle it. down. Got it. No trickling down, brother. Okay. Well, they, he 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 looks like he um. He looks like a real fruit booty, uh, Ted Cruz. Yes, he does. You know, and he does look like the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. His, his shape of his uh, face is that pointy, that long pointy proboscis of his. And what he says is crap. Okay. Of course they want to privatize everything and anything because... You know it, why, don't you? To make the government small enough to drown in the bathtub. Well, they want and to when they make the government small, what are they doing? They're creating they are, a, plu a corporate plutocracy? Well, yeah, and they're preventing us from having any counterattack. Because without the government, us, we have no power against the big corporations wanna, and the plutocracy. They want it like ancient Egypt. They want to be the pharaohs, and they want us to be the slaves. Ooh. And desperate and destitute and, and, and powerless. 
That's what yeah. they want. It, it's it's it, the, you see human nature. For you, um, uh, Barney the dinosaurs out there, uh, there, there are there's a large group of ultra left wing people that are like Barney the dinosaur. I love you. Do you, you love, love me? me? We all love one another. But kumbaya. Yeah, kumbaya. It's it's unrealistic. Never happened. It's not going to happen. Forget about it. Forget about bipartisanship compromising. That's not going to happen. You can't, you can't negotiate with the forces of evil, and that's what you're dealing with. Um, there's no compromise, and um, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah, it, 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 it's just, um, it's like banging your head up against a brick wall. You're not going to accomplish anything. The only way anything got accomplished in this country was when the progressives or Democrats are in power. The two branches and the presidency. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you got anything. And then if your Supreme Court has the conservatives on it, then you get problems like FDR had. Wouldn't it be great if wouldn't it be great if um if the president well no that no I was gonna say something but I just thought that could be c catastrophe also. Yeah. Like if the president elect was able to clean house with the Supreme Court so that means that would what would go wrong is if a Republican got elected, God forbid, he, he would have all Republican justices, and that would be that would be a very bad thing. That's so, but, but the thing is, they're, it's a monarchy; they're in for life, unless they quit or retire or die. You know, they're basically there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, you people that uh, do not want to uh, ever utter a discouraging word. You're just not living in the real world, and you got to fight hard and dirty with uh, these wicked right wingers. There's just no choice. You can't make nice nice with them. This fight has been going on since the 18, late 1800s, the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, and it's still not uh, settled, and uh, it's getting worse and worse because the money gets more and more every year and the gap between the rich and the poor grows wider that's correct the middle class is and becoming that ruins the economy middle class is becoming uh, extinct yeah for like 40 50 years and after world war ii right. we deliberately with tax policies and etc made middle class america mm-hmm and the plutocracy, you know, went to hell. Right. But then the conservatives got back in power, and look what we have today. So Ted Cruz, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan, Marco Rubio, and 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 Chris. Christy Cream Christy. Right, and his, uh, his, uh, the, and the bloated toad, the new bloated toad, Antonin Scalia, all of you have a permanent place in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you. Shame, 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 as Sin always says. Guess who might get back into the 2016 presidential race? Ralph Nader. Mitch Romney. He might that, run again. Hasn't he had enough? Talk about an egomaniac. They think he could win this time. Oh, he was a dope in the first uh, debates. You know, uh, um, not as dopey as, uh, was it Rick Perry? Yeah. <laughs> Texas governor who, uh, Oops. Yeah. Oops. Oops. I, th I don't recall. I, I forgot. I don't know what my policies are. I forgot. <laughs> no, but I it's, forgot my script. My talking points. I forgot. I would never. I would never imagine when I was a kid that the government could be run by elected morons that are bona fide morons. As the Bible says, <laughs> God puts in place the basest of men to govern.
or the numbskulls of women, like uh, Michelle Bachman and Sarah yeah. Palin. Sarah Palin, oh, what? There, there isn't a week that goes by that they don't say something idiotic. Palin wants to impeach the president, but she has oh, really? no facts to impeach him on. She just wants to impeach yeah, him. Yeah, that's all. Well, because I'm, he's a king. I want to impeach her from the spotlight completely. He's a king. Don't you see how this king is ruling here? He can't get Congress to do a damn thing. Sarah Palin's brain has been impeached many years ago. As I said many years ago, she, she was not ready for prime time. And she's still not ready for prime time. She's only ready to stay on that ranch up in Alaska and stay there and make moonshine. Yeah, and, that and socialistic uh, state, uh, Alaska. Really? Where the oil companies have to pay everybody a stipend every year. Oh, how socialistic. Socialism um, is embraced by uh, conservatives only when it benefits them. Yeah. But if it benefits... Ain't that funny? If it ben benefits the mainstream or the poor or the little guy, then they, they have forbid. a fit. They have a fit. Yeah. Such hypocrites, so obvious is their agenda, but you know, there are people who are still going to vote for them. Well, you know, their agenda is not as obvious to some people as it is to others. You mean the cultists? They are there to destroy the United States government, but the people who vote for them don't realize that. But when Norquist comes out and says it right to their faces, we want the United States small enough yeah. to drown it in a bathtub. But they, but they accept the demonization of government, just like they accepted the demonization of uh, of liberals that were uh, pro-choice. They, 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 they. The, it, it's ingrained in them. The demonization well, of they government. These, they come up with these ideas. Big government is bad because they yeah. listen to idiots like Rush Limbaugh and Fox News, so they're totally brainwashed that big government Why is, is bad. big government bad? Because it, it's not. Huh? Because it works for you and me. And not the rich. And that's what they don't like. And it makes the rich pay their fair share in taxes. Oh, bingo! Now, why can't people see this logic? Revelation twelve nine. They are deceived. They, they, yeah, they, they're, they're deceived. Do you think possibly something's wrong with their brain? Well, yes. As far as compassion is concerned, they lack oxytocin. No, they're just they're just led by Satan and his demons. I think that's part of it. But what about um, the fact that they they don't have a an independent, free-thinking mind. They, they cannot because question. They like, they like leaders. They want to follow. They like, they like the concept of somebody telling them what to That's do. Correct. The big daddy in the sky. That's correct. That's they want to be correct. told what, what's right and wrong. That's they can't true. think for themselves. That's true. That's, That's why they, they make decisions, independent decisions. Ideologies. And that's what they go by. They don't. They don't like. Uh, that's the, ready made, baby. They hate the show. Cookie cutter. Cookie cutter. They hate the show Cosmos. They hate uh, uh, Tyson Grayson. What's his name? Tyson. Uh, the the uh, physicist. Neil deGrasse. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Tyson. They don't. They can't stand him because he don't say the Earth is uh, six thousand years old and that's that. And there's no. There's no life out there in the universe and. You know, and uh, so on and so on. So they don't like him. No. So there, there is no science. Uh, um, you, you, I, I posted a banner which said, um, "The best place to hide money from a Republican is to put it into a science book. Ah. They'll never read it." <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Let us sink our teeth into these readings this week. Oh boy. Oh boy. Unsurprisingly, the United States Supreme Court ruled that a for-profit corporation can have religious beliefs. Keep it to yourself. I mean, of keep course. It. 
This is just a continuation of an assiduous and decades-long attempt to constrain women's rights, abrogate labor laws, and expand corporate personhood. In other words, to promote religious liberty. I'm sure this is all going to piss off the female voter in uh, this November in 2016. Except One would of, hope. Except, of course, the, um, the shills, the stooges that work for Fox News, the, the blonde bombshells of Fox News, yeah. unless they're paid to act that way. Maybe they're actresses. Just as Samuel Alito and his colleagues have limited religious exemptions to closely held private corporations. That is, a modest group that contains more than 90% of American businesses and more than half of America's workforce. Well, they're, they're, they're paying for all these privileges, people have to understand. They pay off Washington. They, 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 they bought these privileges. So then, a considerable number of private sector businesses can, as Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg warned in her dissent, opt out of any law except tax laws they judge incompatible with their sincerely held religious beliefs. Religion that, that has not been proven by anyone. According to this court, one's rights are not those that the state elects to enforce, but, one, but what one believes them to be. The First Amendment was conceived to prevent religious encroachment on secular government. But the court of Chief Justice John Roberts uh, has invalidated or more accurately, ignored the Constitution and a half century of legal precedence for its own opportunistic ends. I cannot help feeling an intense disappointment in regard to those who defend this decision. One either supports government protection from puritanical and patriarchal pros proscriptions or not. In sum, this is a dangerous decision that permits a commercial enterprise to evade the law by citing serious and sincere religious beliefs. It's nonsense upon stilts that allows for discrimination against anyone. A minefield indeed. Yes. Continuing in the same vein, as an employer and a man of deep religious I, for one, am very happy with the Hobby Lobby ruling by the United States Supreme Court. Deep convictions. Yeah, prove it. Although my religion has nothing to say on the subject of contraception, it very clearly considers it the gravest sin to engage in or support war. I find that I can no longer remain true to my religious beliefs and yet continue to withhold that part of my employees' federal taxes that goes to funding war. I am absolutely certain that my sincerity, sincerely, excuse me, held faith requires requires me to refund to my employees the 
of their withheld federal taxes that goes to the Department of Defense. Okay, go ahead. That, that's a religious uh, issue, too. Thou shalt not kill. Since my religion also emphasizes compassion, I am less clear as to whether to refund them the additional 5.1% that goes to veterans benefits. Yeah, since they're not getting any. <laughs> I am also uncertain as to how much to refund the additional 13.9% percent of their taxes that goes to pay off the interest on our debt. Almost all of which was incurred to pay for our wars. I believe the court should have no trouble allowing me to refund these amounts. Please understand that this is not about money or politics. It is about my covenant with God. Surely that, that trumps federal law. I await the court's decision. Well, if you're going to mix church and state, you you got to go all the way with it. You can't just be hypocritical and just say, you know, and just uh, uh Harass and and, and uh, attack women and, and their and their gynecological health care needs. You got to go across the board with you know uh, with the, uh, with the wars, the, the the money spent on wars, which would have uh, many times over eradicated uh, uh, poverty and hunger and homelessness in the yeah. United States. Four to six trillion dollars was spent on Iraq alone. Uh, yeah. Imagine well, what the, that the, could have done. The money spent, they would say the money spent on one particular plane that was never used. It was an astronomical sum. It said it said that it would have it would have paid for education for all Americans. That God forbid. The conservatives would not like that. They do not like an educated electorate. They lose. Because if you're educated, you won't vote for a Republican. Correct. Because you'll have, well, along with education, you'll be, you'll have uh, enlightenment, and you will be informed as to what's really going on, and plus you'll make common sense decisions. <laughs> Yeah. Which is all that's required to to determine whether or not you want to vote for a conservative or a progressive. Oh, it's that time already? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, we gotta take a quick break. It's not lunch time, but we gotta take one. This is a rare occurrence. Okay, sorry about that, folks. We're back. Okay. Continuing. The United States Supreme Court's egregious decisions are compounding one upon the other. Deciding that corporations are people, and then deciding that we can't infringe upon a person's religious freedom, as in the Hobby Lobby decision, is the prime example of how this court is actively circumventing our democracy. Yeah. For which our forefathers fought hard. These decisions must stop if this country is to stop it's fast slide into a government of the corporation. 
Yeah, yeah we the corporations. By the corporations. By the corporations. Yeah. And for the corporation. Yeah, the corporate oligarch. They are now empowered by this court to buy any politician the people elect. There you go. I never thought I would live to see this country's principles overturned by my own supreme court. I would never, I would never have imagined that the entire American system would be corrupt. The two-party system and, and the Supreme Court. Well, it has been corrupt for, for most of its 238 years or whatever the hell it's been around. They, they, they just... Uh, Put on the theatrics when they uh, when they present uh, inf information to the American people. When they go live on, on TV and uh, whatever the American people hear in the media and read, it's an act. They they just give you what they want to give you. Pacify. about pacifying the masses any anymore. Well, they don't have to pacify them anymore. They got FEMA camps. That'll pacify them all right. You seem you seem to underestimate the malicious. I do. I don't care if they have bazookas. They ain't gonna make it against tanks unless unless the military and police realize uh, who the real demons are and they go and they they, they go mutiny you gonna bet you gonna bet on that no well thank you no because they they're they're they're, they're getting paid from these It's a government coup. The government has been taken over by the plutocrats and the corporations. It is not our government how anymore. Come, how come? Um, how come when when the, you hear about a terrorist attack, whether it be from um, people from the Middle East or whether it be from people that are American? How come the victims are always innocent bystanders and you never hear about a corporate CEO being taken out? Uh -huh. It's funny how that works. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, let's see all the CEOs from uh, the 2007 2008 financial meltdown. None of them are in jail. Wall Street crosses. Some low level jumbaloni is in jail or going to jail. But none of the big boys. No, not at all. What about the people who gave bad information to Bill Clinton? Like Larry Summers. Where are they today? Rich! Well connected. What about the traitor all over north? I mean, it goes on and on and on in this country as it stands. The evil and the wicked are rewarded. Satan's world. That's great. They are all as slippery as ash. It's one of the uh, 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 
creams for uh, sexual uh, play? It's supposed to be the number Astrid one, Light? the number one um, uh, uh, personal lubricant, as they, they uh -huh. call it. They like to call it the uh -huh. retail business. Personal lubricant. It's the number one. Uh, actually, uh, hospitals use it for uh, delivering babies. For uh, they, it, it assists. So they slide out. So they slide out, as opposed. <laughs> The sliding things in. Ah. Ah, okay. Hold on. Oh Deserves a little levity, though. A federal judge in Nebraska is drawing attention for using a vulgar reference on his blog to suggest that the United States Supreme Court should not have heard the Hobby Lobby case. The High Court's June 30th ruling found that some businesses, because of their religious beliefs, can choose not to comply with the federal health care laws requirement that contraception coverage be provided to workers at no extra charge. Senior U.S. District Judge Richard Kopf, K-O-P-F, Kopf, Hercules and the umpire in it Oh, that's his blog. Hercules and the Empire. In it he wrote that the ruling looks bad to the public because the five justices who made up the majority opinion on an issue affecting women are all male. Interesting. Catholic. Oh, boy. And appointed by Republican presidents. They're male and right wing. Of course they're going to be anti-women. He also wrote that it is time for the court to STFU. A slang acronym that means be quiet, but includes an expletive. Say it. We're on censors. Oh, I don't know what it's. STF. I don't know what Shut the, the fuck is. up. I. That's it. Shut the fuck up. Right. STFU. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Cough. Link the abbreviation to his definition in the Urban Dictionary. This term and several past terms have proven that the court is now causing more harm to our democracy than good by deciding hot-button cases that the court has the power to avoid. Kopf was appointed to the federal bench in 1992 by President George H. W. Bush. Lovely. And he was so he's a Republican. And he was a, and, and 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 he was approved. Criticizing other Republicans. But doesn't the uh, he will be ostracized very quickly? Doesn't the um, appointed judge? Uh, have to get the approval of the House and the Senate before becoming... The Senate advises and consents to, re uh, to uh, presidential appointments. Does not vote on the, on the approval of the judge, right? Do they vote on the approval of the, the judge? The Senate advises and consents. 
Oh, that's what I, that's what I meant. Like all federal judges, his appointment was for life. Lovely. Conf is now semi-retired, taking only cases assigned to him. The judge's blog post had gotten more than 250 comments by Tuesday. Many were supportive, but some <laughs> also criticized the judge for chiding the Supreme Court. If, if the Democrats had control of both the House and the Senate, could they, um... They could do anything they wanted. Could they override a, 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 a right-wing... President? Judge. A right-wing Supreme no, Court you judge. you can't override a judge. He's in there for life. His decisions are his decisions. And, and if there's enough Supreme Court judges who vote on the same thing the same way, there is nothing the House and the Senate that can do. The, the House and the Senate can make, can override the law that he made the decision on. They can make another law to exempt it, to make it null and void. Okay. You know. So, if it, no matter how... But that would have to be, you know, okay by them, okay by the Senate, and okay yeah. by the President. Yeah. Like, for instance... Or you could get a constitutional amendment. Like like the decision that was just made, the, the insane decision that was just made, mixing church and, and, and state, and church and corporate, uh, you know, What policy. is happening... What is happening in the United States is that towns, cities, or whatever, they can also call for a constitutional amendment. And that is what's happening. And I believe you need 35 states to get something like that and ratified right. and all, everything. Like, like for instance, uh, honesty in, in food labeling concerning GMOs in Monsanto. If the government continued to get paid off by Monsanto and continued to kiss Monsanto's ass, but the states demanded honesty in labeling. Something could be done. Those states can pretty much say, the hell with you. We're not, we we demand honesty and labeling if you're going to sell in our state. And, and enough states got together and say, we want, we demand honesty and labeling. They can now, get that done. I don't know if that would be a constitutional one. Because, like, states like Alabama won't have, won't allow you to have a vibrator so that you can pleasure yourself. So all the sex toys that you you might see online, you could not, you know, there'll be a little disclaimer. Import into Alabama? We cannot import them into Alabama. However. They won't the, be Alabama bound. However, the Constitution says that states cannot do that. They cannot interfere with yeah. interstate commerce. So, you right. know. Yeah. But the problem is, you see, the problem is with court cases, if nobody has the money to bring a case against it, nothing gets done. Our justice system does not mete out justice. Because if it meted out justice, it would be free. But it's not. Yeah, like 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 if other states decided, hey, we really admire Vermont. We want to be just like Vermont. Well, well, they can do that. They can do that. You know, Vermont is 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 the perfect example of the right thing to do if you're a state. <laughs> you know, I mean, this uh, is just such a, a, a 
people that are in Vermont are just so great. You know, the way the state is run. What is the license plate? Live free or die? Something like that? So, that might be New Hampshire. No, that's New Hampshire. That might be New Hampshire, but... No, Sorry! I'm so huh? Sorry, New Hampshire! Sorry, New Hampshire. Well, it's moose country up there. Yeah, did you see the thing on Facebook the other day? I don't know how the hell the moose got in a car. The car was crashed. The moose was inside the car. How did he get in there? I don't know. It must have been a young moose. No, it was a huge moose. Bullwinkle. It was huge, baby. Well, I don't know. All right, let's go here. Yes. Because I want to see if we can get this in. My boyfriend and I, changing the subject. Here we go, dear Abby. Have been together for five years. We were long distance for four years. That long. And then last year, I moved to Florida to be with him. Florida's got problems nowadays. I don't know. He has always said he doesn't want to live anywhere other than Florida. I felt the same way until I. I read about <laughs> all the stuff, but anyway. Initially, I didn't think that would be a problem, but now I am wondering. My family lives thousands of miles away, and I miss them terribly. I resent that he is unwilling to compromise about things, like where we live, for instance. To top it off, I don't feel attracted to him. And why the hell did they get together? Duh! Duh! Flora, duh! What I, what I, oh, you know what? I, I, I don't envy this dear Abby's job because I would be going <laughs> off on these, these, these brain cell deficient people. Wait a minute now. It, it gets more complicated. Good thing I'm not a shrink. Sometimes I feel attracted to women. Then why did she get seriously involved with a man? I've never been with a woman, but these <sighs> feelings really confuse me. I am 34 years old. She's confused. If I were gay, wouldn't I have known it before? People are beginning to ask if we will marry. Oh. And the thought makes me feel queasy. I'm queasy. <laughs> I'm squiggy. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, you know, just, <laughs> just listening to this. My parents had an acrimonious divorce. Acrimonious? And I thought I was opposed to marriage because of this. Now I wonder if there is more to consider. <laughs> I worry that I won't run away from good things when I have them. This is the comedy section of our show, by the way. Despite the fact that I am not always happy here. Sometimes I am. Oh, this woman is bonkers, man. And Poor my guy. boyfriend is incredibly supportive. Yeah, he's, he's and incredibly, loving. incredibly stupid, too. It's, it's just... I love him! She can, she can say anything she wants. She's still nuts. But I'm not sure I'm in love with she loves him as a person. You see, so if somebody tells you, I love you, that doesn't mean they really love you. So or in love with you. So how do they, so, but, but sometimes, but a person could say, I love you, and, and mean in love. But then again, a person can say they love you as a friend, but not mean in love. It's extremely confusing. Uh -huh. We know? live, we live together. I have a job here. Duh. And any real change?
change would have to be a big one. What should I do? Drown, uh, 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 jump into the Florida Everglades and uh, be strangled by a python. Or, and, and then fed to a gator. <laughs> what a... In the news business, we call what you just did insanity. I'm not sure about moving, and by the way, I might be gay. Burying the lead. So let's go back to the part of your narrative where you wonder about your sexual orientation. This is the part of your story that is truly about you. There are no rules about sexuality. But the current thinking is that sexual orientation happens along a wide spectrum. You can discover or uncover different aspects to your personal and sexual identity at any point in your life. You have a lot to sort out. Ideally, with a therapist's help. You need to peel this onion. Be ruthlessly honest with yourself about each and every layer. And make some changes. Perhaps even big changes. Knowing that in life, the th thing that matters most is not whether you make mistakes or change your mind about things, but whether you act with integrity toward yourself and other people. Yeah, I mean, she's leading this poor guy on, um, even though he's obviously blind to her shenanigans. And uh, she's not sure about her sexuality, but she, she travels across the country to cohabitate with this man, to, to live with him, and uh, they're engaged. She didn't say engaged, she but they're, said, they're will living they together. marry? They're living together. And, uh, they're living together. And uh, now she's not sure if she's in love with him, but she loves him, I guess, as a person. But, she but so what instant? I feel sorry for him. What instance brought up this gay thing? It just came out of nowhere. Well, her, 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 her letter makes it look like it came out of nowhere. But obviously, if she feels that way, something happened in which there was an attraction to a female or something she should have let us know about that. But she did not. Oh, she just took a quick detour into this subject. It's like if I was uh, talking to you about Mexican food and how to make uh, chicken enchiladas uh, suiza, and all of a sudden I start talking about pizza pie. You know, it's like she well, as Abby said, she, she should have thought. She should have thought this out before she moved in with this man across the country. She's burying her head in the sand. Uh, in some instances, oh. I like to bury your head with my shillelagh. Knock some sense into it. It'll be the, uh, the lowest cost psychiatric care she'll ever find. Okay, now. We are going on the official break. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch. And I will be meeting with the one and only our official voice over artist William H. Morrow the <laughs> third, followed by promo, our our promo done by William H. Morrow the third, and then we will return for the uh, balance of the show. By uh, 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 so speaking of promo, yes, are the readings up there now? 
Yes, sir. Do, uh, have they appeared on my home page? Uh, 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 the, they are on your uh, Facebook profile as of no, the... No, home page. Home page, not profile. Nobody yes. looks at my profile. Not yes. even me. They are on, they should be on your home page right. as of the evening you gave them to me. Okay. They're all... And that, we are talking about the readings for newsletter censored number 128. Yes. The main article, The God Project, and How to Defeat a Conservative. Yes. In all of their video slideshow splendor. Mm -hmm. As of the same... At least they ain't getting burned up in the, uh, the fireplace. No. No, the, the same night... The same day you gave them to me, they are. Right. They have been there. Okay, good. good. And they're on YouTube, as seen on the web. Good. All right, we'll catch you when I get back from meeting with Billy Morrow. Okay, we're here with William H. Morrow the third. Um, Billy, um, you know, things are really uh, um, regressing nowadays. People know that, you know. I mean, it's all around us. The judicial system, uh, um, quality of life, attitudes of people. It, 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 it's it's almost like we're reverting backward to the days of kangaroo courts in a while. A while west and well we are you're, you're seeing more more injustice talk of vigilantism the rise and increase in militia groups people are fed up torches and pitchforks like the frankenstein people movie. are tired of the way things are sadly i mean they want to uh, they they want to make bigotry legalized uh, they want to abuse Im immigrants especially of color they want to take away women's rights slowly uh, well, when you say they, they what do you mean by they? well the the, the 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 religious nuts that, that are in in uh, in political positions the right wing fundamentalists well, certain few zealots it doesn't speak for all religious yeah. people because most religions well, not, I don't know if it's most but they're they're fairly normal I know mine as I was raised as a Methodist we're about the most liberal religion there is we welcome and turn no we welcome everyone and turn no one away we're extremely liberal right. and open-minded so what you're saying is what myself and uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman have been saying for years is that it's people who corrupt their religion sure. not the religion that corrupts them sure just because you have a bad leader and a corporation a bad CEO or a few bad executives or whatever doesn't make the whole corporation bad a few individuals make it yeah. bad like for instance the CEO of Nestle says that uh, pure drinking water is not a right of humans on earth that that, well, that we first, should privatize it personally I believe he's an absolute moron you make that's that statement my that's just plain stupid he pissed people off so now, judging it all upon how much money you have then you get water that makes a lot of sense so he has a, yeah because he's trying to buy up all the aquifers in the world well that's just too bad to sell bottled water now for hundreds of millions of years creatures have been drinking pure water for free and now this guy comes forth after all hundreds of millions of years is he still ceo he's still the ceo of nestle yeah and what was the the, the, the the repercussions from his statement people were furious worldwide so people didn't respond yeah okay but it's almost like uh, you're drunk with power you're in a position i have money those of you that don't, I don't care about you. I have mine. That's you saying. don't have I yours. I don't care about you. Yeah. I care about me. Right. So I, they, always, so I always did wonder why people. But I've had this discussion many times over the decades. Why do you 
get upset and care about your children, relatives, what have you, but not those that aren't related to you. Why don't you care about what makes you care about those that are related to you? Why not all people? I have friends that are closer to me than my own relatives. Sure. But I, I you're one of them. I thank you. You are as well. But I also get upset at seeing what's going on in Israel through the Hamas and vice versa, back and forth. The innocent people being killed in Iraq. I don't like seeing people suffer. It's mistreatment and inhumanity based on. Why do people only care about those related to them, for the majority? Based on religion, you know? Well, who cares? It's unproven. No religion has been proven yet. When you think about it. Well, I think down the road it will be proven that they're sadly all wrong. I truly do. A lot of delusional individuals out there. As we've said on your previous shows, belief or faith is hope. It is not fact. It's not fact. Shows like ancient aliens, UFO files, and it's like, they back things up yeah. more than any religion does. They show what's truly going so, on. So, so, how how can, so how can a Supreme Court judge or a politician try to pass a bill, a law, with no scientific backing or proof whatsoever, no, no fact, it's an ideology, it's unproven, but they have passed certain laws based on ide ideologies. I don't know. Like they're very anti-gay. So what if somebody is gay? I'm not anti-gay at all. I'm all for gay. I am not. I am not. I'm, I'm as straight as could be. But I believe in the right to our constitution. The right to pursue happiness. You're gay. I'll be your friend. I've had all the... I haven't had all. I haven't had that many gay friends. But I've had a Fair number in the past, and not one ever tried a thing with me because they knew Billy was not gay. But Billy's a good man, and he would always be there for you as a friend. Well, they respected you, they man. knew that. They knew the, the line, like a, I mean, he's not gay, but he'll be your friend. Cut and dry, simple, bam. Right. It's that easy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what people do in the privacy of their own homes, including a, a Woman's contraception, like now the, the, the what's in the spotlight is trying to tell an employer that, you know, that he doesn't want to cover a woman's con contraception in the uh, employee health insurance plan. You what? mean what? You mean uh, providing condoms or what have you or what? Uh, no, like the you know, uh, uh, general woman's gynecological care. He, uh, they want to give the employer the right to say we're not going to cover your contraception but isn't that part of the gynecological care of a woman yeah i don't understand okay. all this i don't understand it, never, I, it is very to me it's very confusing where do we draw the line where do we start i'm like what well what, what what's going on is a certain yep. su supreme court judges who are right-wing fundamentalist religious nuts are are involving church and state they're they're they're, in, they're affecting political decisions based on their religion which is absurd it's insane well you only have how many are there supreme court judges and seven, they're in for life or nine. how many is it i don't i'm not sure i think it's nine but they're in but, for life they're appointed you know, everything we do comes down to those the final say and believe it or not, uh, it's, it's, you and know. they're not voted in. They're appointed, and they're and they're usually in for life unless they, they quit or die. Has any, to my knowledge, never has any Supreme Court been relieved of duty or command because of horrible decisions? I don't know of any. You I mean impeached? Any. We're just kicked out. I'm they saying. should be. They should. They should be impeached. Uh, I mean, they. Uh, uh, do uh, we what? need a, for the public's purposes a peer? An equal a peer review court alongside them. Another, another nine that say, "Whoa, whoa, overridden." Let's rediscuss. This. If a Supreme Court judge is is proven to be not of sound mind, well, what you're saying in the Supreme Court is what they're saying is gospel. That's final. That's the end. We are the elite. Yeah. That's it. Don't argue with us. We will make the final. Decision. And and they. What if it's not a good one? What if it's a horrible decision? You know, like uh, like, like 
trying to, to um, the, um, the big oil is trying to create a sun tax to tax solar energy, to tax the sun because it's cutting into their profits. That's a bad decision. It's based on greed. But but they're getting they're getting their way. Yeah, years ago, you, you you broke up IBM. You broke up AT and T because they were getting too big. But you're allowing this. Would you explain that reason for me? I don't. Nobody can. Drunk with power, like we were saying before. Drunk with power. But IBM was not trying to hurt anyone. No. They no. were phenomenal. As professional as I was a, I am a product of an IBM family. I'm an IBM brat. As professional as it comes. Yeah, they uh what about remember the movie Tucker? How oh, they stuck it to him because he built a great car. So when you, I met with John DeLorean, he told me the true story behind his DeLorean. A lot of BS goes on. You know? So even when you do the right thing, you get yeah. screwed. You can be as professional as quality driven as can be, but if it cuts into potentially their profits, we don't want you around. No. It's corruption. You're okay. You're, you're absolutely no. right. A minimum wage should not be taxed because they're not they're they're getting so they're so far behind the you cost. You can't of, live on that alone. Of course, not. even even much less you're taxing it. No. They they did a um a study of a, let's say a, a single or divorced mother with one child. Child. If she had a full-time minimum wage job, she cannot survive at all. She cannot pay her basic living expenses. Even the the bare bo bare bones, uh, rock bottom living expenses, she cannot pay that. On eight twenty-five an hour? No, That's no. Why I was totally eight twenty-five. I think it's seven. Well, it depends. Seven, I guess what state you're in. It depends what state. I was yeah. all for them a few months ago and they all walk out nationwide for 15 an hour. Give it to them. Even, let's be honest, even 15 an hour is not really that much to live on. How do you tax it? Let's be fair here, okay? Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 old turtle face uh, Republican Mitch McConnell, instead of taxing the rich to pay for infrastructure, bridges, and roads, he wants, he, he wants the construction workers to Take a ten percent pay cut. Oh yeah, tell that to construction. Well, how much of uh, your senators and congressmen? What pay cuts have you taken? They don't none. Well, why not? They get a minimum. Don't of, you lead by example? You should. So why not? They get a minimum of one hundred and seventy-five thousand a year, not counting perks. Do you have, know how many people would die and be as happy as pigs, and they could live well on half of that? Half of a hundred. 75 grand. Yeah. But they they never take a pay cut. Why not? Never. They Why do. can they preach, but they can't uh, lead by examples, we just said that. No, they don't. Well, Chris Christie, uh, he gave a speech one time saying that the people of New Jersey have to start making sacrifices. But he didn't, he didn't make any sacrifices. How much can we sacrifice? Could it, be, could it get any worse? How much more can we sacrifice? The, the economy? No, I don't know I how much more. I don't understand this. And I still go back to these minimum wage workers, and even slightly above minimum wage. This should not be taxed. It's, these people need every penny they can make. It's so outdated. It's so far behind the cost of living. Yeah. It's 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 absurd. It's yeah. insane. They should not be taxed. You know what else should not be taxed? Unemployment. Right. The payments. people live on this stuff. That's gov money government's giving to you, and they're taking it back. Isn't it taxed twice? Oh yeah. In a sense, yeah. so it's a lottery. Uh, what about we have the only democratic nation that taxes us lotteries? What about inheritance tax? Isn't that isn't that it's already been taxed too? I mean, I, and I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah, the this. the um, the de deceased uh, father, mother, aunt, uncle, whatever. I mean, uh, they paid income tax on that money, and then they charge you again. It's 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 a big screw job. It's like like I said, it's like the old crooked corrupt kangaroo courts of the wild wild west it's unfair and it's getting worse it's not getting any better now uh, on a happier note if there is a happier note i go 
shopping often at a store called Aldi's. It's a uh, main office is based in uh, Illinois, and uh, I believe it's a German-owned company. Why can't more stores learn from stores like companies like Aldi's and Costco? I, I got two loaves of two large loaves of 12 grain multi-grain bread. It's only a dollar eighty-nine per loaf. Uh, I picked up from my mother's. Um, um, they have this. Um, it's not margarine. It's uh, has no trans fats. It's it's very low, low calorie, low fat. Tastes like butter. You know, in that in that um, type type of a product. You know, similar to that. Ninety nine cents a tub. The prices are phenomenally low. All right, granted, you have to bring your own bag, but the prices are normal and, and the way groceries should be priced. They're affordable, they're low. Costco treats its employees wonderfully. You know, uh, with a, with a- White Castle. Right, exactly. Well, the smaller franchise, but after I think 16 days or whatever, you get full benefits. Full benefits. And others can't do that. Yeah. Follow suit as Yeah, I think Costco uh, starts their people off with a minimum of like $12 an hour. Minimally. McDonald's, you're getting, what, I, I assume, seven or eight, something. Yeah, like unless you're in Denmark. If you're in Europe, McDonald's pays $21 an hour. Well, cost of living, I guess, different. Uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's more or less greed here in the United States. Uh, well, I've said to you in previous shows, just slow your profit margin. Don't go into debt. Yeah. But instead of making $10 billion, you know, make $8 billion this year, okay? Well, just so they interviewed the CEO of, of Costco, and he explained it right he says it, it's much better in in the long run for the economy if your employees can have more spending cash more surplus cash plus, to spend. Happier. plus you have less turnover people leaving good people leaving. you'll get people that stay uh you want people that stay because because if they love their job logically from Familiarity dealing with the public, people like to see the same faces yeah. when they come back in and say, "Hey, Jimmy," or "Hey, he Debbie." He takes or, care. He takes great you know, care I've of me. I've known this guy for two years. He's been here, and he always so takes that. great care of me. Now, when you keep changing faces, moving people around, that's your biggest mistake. Right, and and you know? the fact that if you're happier at your in your job and you like your productivity your, output will be a lot right. Better. If you like and love your love your company, your productivity will be much better. And uh, you, you just put more money back into the economy. Well, it just shows certain leaders don't know how to lead because they're doing the wrong things. Yeah. So, so other other greedy, stingy companies can take a valuable lessons from all these in Costco and and well, White Castle. There's a lot to be learned yet. You know. Why is there so few do what makes common sense? Think long term. You know. Like you said, think long term. Always. Don't think short term. Always. You know, and, and don't be quick to fire somebody. Give give them a chance to tell their story. Listen to both oh, sides. I, I'm, I'm always believed in that. I got. You say one little thing and bam, you're fired. No, wait a minute. I'd like to say about hear your story here. Even something. How often do you hear of companies with a CEO or board members or president or whatever stands behind somebody? They just because a little public outcry. They get rid of it. No. What about the stupid sexual harassment nonsense where it's her her word against his word? So if somebody, if a woman doesn't like a man's face, she can make up a story. Think somebody might be lying here and get him fired. Right? And don't say it's, that's true. And many, many times, right? They're not lying. Many times they are lying. You better make sure you have the entire story straight. And they don't investigate like. People think. Well, they fire you within a day or two, it seems like. You're gone. You're out. Oh, they don't want any problems. They yeah. don't want any lawsuit. Lawsuit. Yeah, again, the Duke University lacrosse players of years ago. <laughs> they found out these guys did not rape that prostitute. So, lawsuit based on what <laughs> What fact do you because base? She said so. Of course, she said so. She. He word. She. She said so. Look Even though happened. they, meaning he, said we didn't do this. Nobody believed them. They believed her. Look how Mike... Who was right? right. The he's, not the she. Look how... Uh, That's wrong. 
Uh, that's very wrong. Look how Mike Tyson got screwed many years ago by uh, Miss. Well, we don't know Miss, the whole Miss, story on that one. Well, let, let me let me tell you, Miss yeah. Rhode Miss Rhode Island, Desiree Washington. She visited his hotel room at like two or three in the morning, and they found her tampon conveniently placed in a wastebasket. Now you mean to tell me a woman visiting any man's hotel room and and neatly placed Placing her tampon in a wastebasket. Change her tampon, Jimmy. We and she know. cried rape, you know. And she cried rape. So that's why I'm saying, well, that one. I, the jury, I think it's still out. I don't think anybody knows the truth. Right. What about fa famous athletes like the basketball players who had some woman that he might have had a fling with, cry, harassment or rape, you know, just to get money out of it. Because he's a famous rich a lot of it, a lot of it happens. basketball what player. What about what it happens? And it is true, too. We just don't know. But they're not investigating these cases. No, they don't seem to be going far enough. They're taking the woman's word over the man's word. It's, it's a claim. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, uh, you probably heard the uh, somebody screaming, Go! Oh, in the God. background. And yes, the World Cup is playing here. No offense. I just... Uh, at the... At the the internet cafe here and uh, I, you know for such a slow scoring game they get awfully excited I don't understand even to the point of, of violence I'm offending I'm sure a lot of people out there I just don't like soccer I'm sorry I admit it hate me if you will but I just they they even riot they get violent they riot over we don't win we're gonna kill our goalie I it, mean, uh, they turn over. Yeah. They turn over police cars. They well, set we things on fire. Do that here. But but exactly. it's such a slow scoring game. Oh, it's horrible. It is horrible. You know. Well, I know. we're done. We're done. It happens to be a, a hazy, hot, and humid uh, day. We're all uncomfortable. It's white. Until next time, to everybody. Bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back from lunch and from meeting with William H. Moore the third. Thank you very much for meeting with me. We did it for you know. Thank you for a great show. Uh, our official voice artist William H. Moore the third, and also for doing a wonderful job with promo. Um, for those of you that would like to employ the services of William H. Morrow, just send uh, us a message and we will put you in contact with him. Only serious inquiries only. Uh, please. Um, okay. Now back to the show. Giant teeth from a 40 foot long shark portions of what could turn out to be an entire whale skeleton sounds like a megalodon are among more than 500 fossils that had been unearthed at a dam construction in Silicon Valley really most of the fossils dug up at the Calaveras Dam replacement project in Fremont, California. 
are thought to be about 20 million years old, dating to the Miocene epoch, when the ocean extended to Bakersfield, California. The San Jose Mercury News reported on Monday, scallops, clams, barnacles, and the teeth of an extinct hippopotamus, like creature called a Desmostylus. He owned a hair salon? A stylist? In California, yeah, maybe. <laughs> a fat st hair stylist. Oh, gosh. Have all been uh. dug up since 2011. We started finding fossils here before construction even started. Paleontologist Jim Walker, who was working alongside construction crews on the project set. It was exciting. We were finding scallops and I said, I want to get a whale. I would like to have the, those prehistoric scallops broiled. Could you imagine how big they would be? And we did. Crews have discovered nine whale skulls. Plant fossils and fossils of animal tracks and burrows have also been discovered. The $700 million dam replacement project is part of a 15-year, $4.6 billion upgrade to the Hetch, Hetchy water system. Well, California needs that. Yeah, they need it Because they're now. running out of water. Yeah. So are a lot of western Las states. Las Vegas, too. The drought. Arizona, too. The drought has been many months long now, right, Reverend Bill? Oh, yeah. My, 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 now, yeah. I believe it was yesterday, Texas eastern portions got a, lo a lot of rain yesterday, but I don't think that drought in the western section got any relief. Oh, I think uh, Amarilli, Amarillo in Waco. Amarillo by morning. And, uh, yeah, Amarillo in, in the in the panhandle. Well, Texas has two panhandles. The northern panhandle is where Amarillo is, I believe. Uh, which uh, relies primarily on the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir in Yosemite National Park. Yosemite, yeah. and serves about 2.6 million customers in the San Francisco Bay Area. Is Sam still in charge of that part? You know, Yosemite, 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 Yosemite Sam. Sam. Yosemite. Hey, 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 hey. The reservoir created by the Calaveras Dam is among several local reservoirs that supply the region. The dam, completed in 1925, is being replaced with one more capable of withstanding earthquakes. Crews are currently removing earth in front of the dam. Construction on the new dam itself, which will go up about 400 yards downstream is expected to start in 2016, with completion expected two years later. Paleontologists will continue working with construction workers for the next few years. The fossils eventually will end up at a museum in the Bay Area, according to officials from the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission which is building the dam. Hmm. You know, just just think how how many more 
fossils or even preserved prehistoric creatures are still out there to be found, especially as the ice melts with global warming. You know, I mean, they found uh, woolly mammoths that uh, were the flesh and, and, you know, the bone marrow was still intact. Yes, DNA was found. We didn't hear anything more about that. I'm sure they are uh, somewhere. Scientists are trying to bring back the woolly mammoth, but well, they're not. That the media is not telling us about any of it. They found a, a, a Tyran T. Rex DNA in Montana. We are hearing about the I CDC see. making mistakes with very dangerous viruses and such, like anthrax trying to cause a pandemic? Uh, it's because of mistakes being made. Oh, really? Anthrax being sent to other labs and such. And within their own lab, 75 people may have been exposed. You mean uh, these are super pathogens created? In a super CD. I mean, you know, uh, the... Uh, this is biological warfare we're talking about. No, we're talking about just dealing with this stuff daily. Oh, and sh And they're making these mistakes. And transporting them. In tra transporting them within the CDC. And containing them. They don't, they don't belong where they're going. So they are being mistreated. Mistreated. Mistakes are being made. Incompetence in such a dangerous lab. Isn't it? That reminds me of uh, this this incident in the past where they accidentally dropped a uh, live um, atomic bomb uh, somewhere in Carolina, North Carolina. Oh yeah, off the wing of the plane. Yeah, and and and, and it's a good thing it did not detonate and they they frantically searched for it and I think they they eventually found it but you know it's a mistake a very very big and costly mistake if if it would have exploded in this case the anthrax or god forbid weapons grade smallpox or Ebola Ebola is now running wild in Af certain parts of yeah. Africa. I, I've seen pictures of what Ebola patients uh, look like, and it's oh, not God. a pretty sight. No, it isn't. I also saw pictures, very heartbreaking. I saw pictures of um, um, Palestinian children who were victims of the uh, bombing by Israel on Gaza. And, you know, the, the guy, the man, Palestinian a man picks up a, a little, little toddler in, in, in a dress and she has, there's no head there's no head on her shoulders and he's well, picking her up like this you know, you know she's still in the dress a lot of that the collateral damage that is being done is because Hamas hides behind innocent civilians so Israel targets whatever place they suspect that Hamas is hiding well, or that, whatever that's and they blow up collateral damage. That's what Al people. That's isn't that what Al Qaeda was doing yes, in Iraq? Yes, exactly, exactly. They, they hide amongst the civilians. That's exactly right. They had uh, something going on and um, uh, hiding um, weapons or uh, uh, military personnel underneath a mosque. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like or or the uh, uh, Saddam Hussein's. Uh, um, where, where, where he was making the uh, poison nerve gas, it was it was disguised as a baby formula plant. You know, a company that made baby formula, and it was really uh, they were really making nerve gas. To nah, use it on the Kurds. Saddam was never making nerve gas. He was, he no, was on the screwed. Kurds. He on the Kurdish. Uh, no, that was some time ago. That was back in the eighties. All right, all right. That was with Donald right, Rumsfeld. Right, he right, sold them the gas. Oh, really? Yeah, Reagan. Come on, man. Did he? Did Reagan 
you recall he did that? Obviously not. Well, I don't recall. No, you didn't recall a lot. Yeah, I know. Um, well... But, uh, 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 Bill Clinton blew up a, a, a pharmaceutical plant or something because he thought that uh, there were shenanigans going on there. More collateral. With a, with a uh, tomahawk. More collateral damage. You know? But that's what happens. Now, of course, Israel is uh, doing pretty good with its Iron Dome. None of those rockets are getting through. They blast them out of the sky. Well, there are no angels in my, my book, I Israel. No, none of them are when you're... <laughs> there are no angels in war. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of the problems. Pictures are really heartbreaking, you know, when you see the uh, children. Yeah. You know. And the innocent are the ones who suffer. Yeah, well, the same thing with the... Uh, what is it? Um, Afghanistan, drone attacks, and uh, things of that nature. You know, there's collateral damage involving children also. There is more poppy and heroin stuff going on in Afghanistan now than before the army, the U.S. Army, got there. Isn't there a pipeline? Oh, that's in the books. Be in the books? That's in the books, baby. Caspian Sea Pipeline. And minerals are over there. And also, lots of minerals. Also, lots of very nice, large beluga caviar sturgeon are in the Caspian Sea too. It happens in the blink of an eye. Your breathing muscles contract. Your vocal cords clamp shut. And out comes that unmistakable sound. Yeah, the Republicans should have a, a case of the chronic hiccups. We all get hiccups from time to time. So do cats and rats and human fetuses. True, very true. Animals do it. Perhaps you ate too quickly, got too excited, or drank something carbonated. Or you are coming out of anesthesia after an operation. But often, that's why they used to, in the old days, I remember, they gave you... Whiskey. No, they gave you um, ginger ale oh. to rid the gas out of you. Ginger ale is fantastic if you have like a stomach uh, virus, gastroenteritis, or you know, you got the runs, nausea wonderful but often there is no clear trigger doctors don't know what purpose they serve nor do they know how to make them go away in other words the humble hiccup remains largely a mystery and just as theories abound on causes and cures so do home remedies People have very interesting interventions. Scare me! Hurt me! Tickle me! Drink for 90 seconds. Drink upside down for 90 seconds. Or put something, uh, what is it, rock candy or marbles on the floor like uh, Ed Norton did to Ralph Cramden? That was, that's part of the fright. Frightening uh, somebody with hiccups. But these aren't based in science. CMET, Head of Medical Education at American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine, performed a five-year study involving 54 hospital patients with hiccups. Beginning in 1995, he tried a wide range of treatments, including breath holding, strong medication, but he ended up with no results. None of the techniques proved effective. I think the jury is in that nothing works. 
It starts and stops on its own. Even if you drink water. But why do we do it in the first place? Boy, aren't they... Uh, <laughs> why do we do it? Yeah, why do we do it? Some researchers propose it is a fetal digestive reflex that guards against breathing in amniotic fluid while in the womb. Or an early way to train respiratory muscles for breathing after birth. Another theory posits that hiccups date all the way back to our amphibian ancestors. That far back, huh? The classic pattern of breathing in, followed by an abrupt closing of the glottis, is seen particularly in tadpoles. When they use their gills rather than their lungs to breathe. Yeah, then the gills recede, they shrink, and then they, they, they get the lungs of the, of the frog. The tadpole's brain stem tells a flap to close the glottis upon inspiration to prevent water from entering the lungs. This allows the water to pass through the gills. The hiccup reflex may have persisted up the tree of life, even though it no longer serves any purpose. What is agreed upon and well known is the mechanism of a hiccup, referred to in medicine as singultus. Singultus. It is defined by a sudden contraction of the diaphragm and the intercoastal muscles located within the spacing between the ribs, followed by a snapping shut of the glottis. Wow. The space between the vocal folds within the larynx. The quick spasm of inhalation, the colliding with the closed larynx, causes the characteristic sound and bodily jerk. Most experts agree that hiccups involve a neuronal circuit starting with the phrenic and vagus nerves. The vagus nerve extends from the brain stem to the abdomen while the phrenic nerves send signals from the brain to the diaphragm. I thought the vagus nerve uh, send you impulses on which uh, which number to play in the uh, roulette. roulette. Yes, yes. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, do and hey, we need a little levity with this uh, reading. While hiccups are little more than a temporary annoyance for most of us, they can become all-consuming. Colleen O'Lear, a homepage editor at the Washington Post, hiccups nearly every day. Every day? What about that little girl who couldn't stop hiccuping? You mean, well, if you don't stop hiccuping, you can't eat and you can't drink. drink. I don't know. I'm just can't making... communicate. I'm just making it. I'm just saying. Wow. Just Incredible. Saying. Sometimes, just occasionally, other times in fits. When I get them rapid fire, they are pretty high pitched and sound ridiculous. It is physically uncomfortable. The 29 year old has had hiccup spells for as long as she can remember. Doctors say they may be linked to acid reflux disease. Yeah, take uh, deglycerized licorice tablets for that. Which she has had since she was a baby. 
She has tried every home remedy. She has heard of spoonfuls of sugar. Make the medicine go down. No, 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 no. Lay off the sugar. Holding her breath. Deep breaths. Drinking upside down. Sucking on lemons. Some may work temporarily. Most fail. But one thing does work. Eating a spoonful of creamy peanut butter very slowly. Old Lear thinks it has something to do with coating her esophagus. But CMET believes it has more of a mental calming effect. The peanut butter is a type of cognitive behavioral therapy where you're controlling your breathing and thinking about what you're doing instead of getting anxious. You got chocolate on my peanut butter. No, you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Remember that commercial? Nutella. No, not Nutella. That's uh, Reese's. Oh, Reese's peanut butter. The invention of Reese's peanut butter cup. When, well, it, when, you, when, it, when, when they used to use actual Real peanut butter. Real peanut butter, yeah. Nutella is crap. It is partially hydrogenated trans fat and it has sugar in it. Oh, yeah. It is crap. Some people didn't listen to me. They did not heed my warning. They, they kept on saying, it's delicious. I'm going to continue eating it. Well, you know what? You just be another statistic in the hospitals. Although her newsroom colleagues are entirely accustomed to them, O'Lear still finds the hiccups frustrating. The chronic hiccupper who stepped into psychologist Dwayne Hurst's office two years ago got fed up with her five-year run of daily hiccup spells that she initially requested an invasive procedure to crush the phrenic nerve. So this is a medical condition. If the theories are correct about the phrenic and the Vegas, what if they're not? Viva Las Vegas. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, what if they're not? Are we almost done yet? Yes. Okay. Yes. Effectively paralyzing her diaphragm. Hearst of the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. I wouldn't do that based on a theory. Thought such a procedure was far too extreme and instead offered to try a technique called heart rate variability feedback, biofeedback. Mm -hmm. Our nervous system controls involuntary bodily functions such as heartbeats blood vessel contraction via two complementary branches. One branch stimulates responses related to our flight or fight instinct, increased heart rate, di dilated pupils, uh, sweat secretion, while the other initiates the rest and restore mode. That's a sympathetic and a parasympathetic. Some people are oversensitive to stress stimuli and flip too easily back and forth between the two. Perhaps a beneficial trait when man was a target of predators, but not as helpful in today's world where it can lead to unwanted anxiety. A quick flight or fight response that once saved man from cave bears and saber-toothed cats can kick in at inopportune, inopportune moments. Such as a meeting with the boss or while merging on the highway. Not many people are aware that they can use their breathing in a systematic way. Each one of us, individually, as a breathing sweet spot 
for the woman who had considered having her phrenic nerve crushed, Hearst used an electrocardiogram to detect variability in heart rate and instructed her to take carefully measured breaths. Mm, I've never heard so much information on hip corpse in my life. The idea was to help her find a respiration rate that would activate her rest and restore mode. Rebalance the nervous system and ease stress. Mm -hmm. Once she started paced respiration, she began to calm down. And then suddenly no more hiccups. One biofeedback session was all she needed. This was the first hiccups case for Hearst, who typically uses heart rate variability biofeedback to treat migraines, <laughs> tension headaches, fibromyalgia, anxiety disorders, and irritable bowel syndrome. Similarly, Simon has used breathing exercises, cognitive behavioral therapy, and even yoga or Pilates for the hundreds of hiccuppers he has seen over the years. Overall, he only estimates 20 to 25 percent success rate. But he says most people don't need to worry unless the hiccups interfere with respiration or eating. Everybody gets them? We don't know why? We're still in the dark ages understanding hiccups. That's it? That's it. Yippee! whoop de do Remember the words of Laffin's Joanne Worley? This was boring. boring. Well, now you know a whole lot you didn't know before about hiccups, for crying out loud. Very long winded. What do you mean? Long winded information about the hiccups. But we didn't learn anything, did we? No, it's still a bunch of right. theories. Still a bunch of theories. Right. Now we're going to read about more theories. Uh oh. What, what's, what's this subject? Hobby Lobby. Oh, okay. That's interesting. If anyone thinks that the United States Supreme Court's decision in the Hobby Lobby case is limited to Plan B, IUDs, and a few other forms of birth control that are deemed abort efficient, abort fat. Fashions, you know, causing abortion. Yeah, the uh, I would say the copper IUD, the interuterine device, is my favorite uh, uh, form of female uh, birth control because it has no hormones, and you don't have to put a condom on. What about the sponge? It's, uh, the percentage, the, the the failure percentage is. Uh, much what about the sponge? And that's what I mean. I mean, it, it's 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 not the, the the rate of failure is much higher than the. Uh, I mean, for pregnancy, I'm talking about pregnancy. Well, it's actually better to have a cougar, a milf. You mean somebody that went through menopause? Menopause, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the di remember the, the diaphragm. Yes. I think they still make them. Probably. But you have to put this. Uh, uh, the, wim the women have to put this spermicidal uh, on it. cream on it. Yeah. And putting it in, in I hear, is tricky. It's, it doesn't. It, it goes in like you have to fold it and put it inside. Well, what did that Republican idiot uh, congressman or something say? How to prevent pregnancy. Just keep your knees together. Does he keep his knees together? 
No. Or does he? Or does he? And he uh, doesn't keep his, you know what, in his pants. Or does he have his? Uh, does he have uh, call girls visiting him and his uh, Republican buddies on the taxpayers' door? More like little boys down in Costa Rica. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, since they're infamous hypocrites, I wouldn't doubt if uh, their um, social life is uh, being sacrificed. One need only look at the Supreme Court's order to the circuit courts the day after its decision that it should reconsider opinions upholding the mandate on all methods of contraception in light of its Hobby Lobby decision. Also, all manner of very conservative religionists are touting the decision as supporting the notion that the Hobby Lobby decision gives the employers the right to take actions having nothing whatever to do with women's reproductive rights so long as it is a sincerely held religious belief. Sincerely held religious belief. Gee, the Bible said that Basically. back then, ancient India Israel. Every man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. So you're talking about perception. Perception of what somebody thinks. Not, not what's proven, but what somebody perceives to be true. Just like Billy Morrow says, uh, faith is hope. You know, it, faith, it's not, hope, and charity. It's it can't not, be the same because faith hope are different. Well, it's not It's not something that is tangible in fact. That's correct. And you cannot faith prove it. is you have faith in something that you know will occur. That's faith. It hasn't occurred yet. No. So, okay. so, so it should never be involved with politics because... Absolutely. Because it's coming out of somebody's imagination. That's correct. Like, and they can't bring that about. God can bring it about, but they can't. They haven't proved a, a damn thing. But they have a sincerely held religious belief. Well, we have a sincerely held religious belief that the uh, that the uh, these 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 two wars are very very sinful and have wasted trillions of uh, taxpayers' money. The radical Muslims also have sincerely held religious beliefs. There you go. Women don't have any rights in their culture, and plus, they they kill people when they feel like it. Well, they're converting by the sword. Yeah, they they haven't proved their religion either. <clears throat> None of them have. Of course, the decision itself is based on statutory construction rather than the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Which brings me to my conclusion that a health care system based largely on employer provided health insurance makes no sense. They're unrelated and they're, they're, they're absolutely ridiculous. A single payer system such as Medicare, a statutory option, makes a great deal more logical sense. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay, we will change the subject for a little while again here. <clears throat> I recently found a photo of my wife posing with an old boyfriend. She was 19 years old and very beautiful. They were walking arm in arm. 
Though we have been together for 30 years, and the photo was taken two years before she even met me, this picture has made me jealous for over a week. Why is this? Is it that I see her with him? Is it that she was thinner and prettier than she is now? I know I have aged too and put on a little weight. I can't get this picture out of my mind. Is it because as a man I can't want to see my wife with another man? that I see her with him looking so beautiful. Any suggestions for how I can shake this feeling? I don't want something out of my control to ruin my marriage. Ugh. Answer. Another fruitcake. <laughs> this is not out of your control. And it will only ruin your marriage if you let it. Your reaction to seeing this photo is both common and complex. That's why you find it so confusing. As we age, many of us find it difficult to look at younger versions of ourselves or our partners. Some parents even develop irrational jealousy toward their own children. Really? Oh, yeah, it's true. Oh, that's true. Like, uh, if, if the daughter is a little too close to her father, the mother gets jealous. Ooh. It's very petty. It's, it's actually insane. For the sole reason that they possess a due of youth, that is now a mere memory for the parent. Jealousy thrives on secrecy and rumination. Take your feelings out for a spin. Share them with your wife. Be completely candid with her using I statements. When I see this picture, I feel jealous. But I don't know why. Do not put her on the defense. There is a strong likelihood that your wife can understand your emotional reaction to this. This episode could spark a new, deeper, and intimate understanding that you are in fact growing old together. And that's a truly beautiful thing. Good thing I'm not, not a shrink. <laughs> and now we're need a shrink. I'm trying to understand these people. You got one for the road, Chief? Once again, Governor Christie is showing his true colors. He's always showing his true colors. And turning his back on the middle class working men and women by breaking his own agreement to make full payments into the public employee's pension fund. And it only took him three years. The Democrats will push a budget with higher taxes for millionaires. Which the governor will use his line item veto to get rid of. Yeah, it mu mustn't upset his, his, his buddies. Forget the fact that to get to this agreement in 2011, the unions agreed to pay a larger percentage into their pension and more for health benefit premiums. This has been the story for decades. The union workers 
of which I was proudly one before retiring, pay every paycheck, and the state fails to meet its obligations. This has been done by Republican and Democratic governors alike. As for the Republican myth that raising taxes on the millionaires will cause a mass exodus from the state, it isn't true. And by the way, when the taxes were 91, 94, 77%, uh, you didn't see all good corporations and the plutocrats running out of America. No. Not at all. Some will leave, but a Forbes magazine article from February 2013 about a United Van Lines annual study of moving patterns showed that of the 48 continental states, New Jersey had the highest ratio of people moving out compared with moving in. Out of 6,300 total moves tracked in 2012, 62% were outbound. Interesting. Since millionaires only make up about 7.5% of New Jersey households, that suggests that the bulk of people leaving were middle class families because they can't afford a tax burden anymore. Middle class is being strangled by the tax burden unfairly. I will soon be in that latter group. Perhaps the governor should be less concerned with a few millionaires and more concerned with the majority of middle class people he has abandoned. Less concerned with the millionaires, he should not be concerned with the millionaires at, at all. all. They don't need any help. They don't need subsidies. They don't need not, not one penny in, 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 in assistance. Isn't that funny? They, then it's not the, they don't need anything. Right. Isn't they're, that funny? Their money is making money. Their, their, their uh, retirement nest egg is, is all safe and secure. They, they, they can afford their own health care. They can afford their own uh, private jets and uh, beach houses with in-ground pools and uh, and you know and they're not paying taxes and all this so on and so on and so on they don't need any help so why should there be any focus or concern on the rich I'll give you one answer they're the rich pay them off that's correct that's correct <laughs> Back to Hobby Lobby. Right. A Supreme Court decision on Monday that exempted certain companies from providing birth control services required under the 2010 federal health care law is likely to have little effect in New Jersey, where few companies are run on religious principles. Well, that's because we're, we're, we're a tad bit smarter up here in New Jersey. In a narrow decision, the court concluded for the first time that closely held for-profit corporations may claim religious rights similar to those enjoyed by individuals. No. We the people can pull the same religious right routine. The decision, which split five to four along conservative liberal lines, expands exemptions from the mandate imposed by Obamacare to cover contraceptives as part of preventive care benefits for women. It doesn't affect other insurance provisions in the law, such as blood transfusions or vaccination. The ruling came in a challenge to the Affordable Care Act by Hobby Lobby. An Oklahoma City-based chain of arts and craft stores 
the Conestoga Wood Specialties of Pennsylvania, Furniture Maker. Alright, well, um, it's against my religion um, uh, to give to the rich, because in the Bible it says not to give to the rich. It, it, quote it, that quote, please. It's against my religion. He who, he who takes away from the poor to give to... No. He who takes away from... <laughs> do you have a copy? Paraphrase it, please. Just paraphrase uh, 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 he Anyway. Who takes, he who, who takes from the poor, takes from the poor to, to give, give to, the, to the, rich, the rich shall surely come to one. And then there's another part. And he who gives to the rich. Yes, yeah, shall surely come to want. The Bible is loaded with uh, commands to for the rich to help the poor and not to give to the rich. Well, it's against my religion to uh, give to the rich. Therefore, not no money should be given in subsidies to the rich, especially taxpayers' money. It's against my religion to uh, uh, spend taxpayers' money on the war in uh, the Middle East and in, in you know or, uh, Afghanistan Iraq whatever because it says thou shalt not kill in my religion in the Bible yeah well that so, didn't work out too well did it well uh, uh, that is those are bigger um, sins those are bigger sins than preventing pregnancy from taking place I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me on this, but if I'm not mistaken, only one, I don't know if you, I think he was a senator, John Kasich, was the only one who voted against the war in Iraq. Really? I believe it was only one. So, so there, was, there was really that much war profiteering going on? Well, Hillary Clinton voted for it, John Kerry voted for it. And they didn't find any way? Weapons of mass destruction. Well, they knew that, that was a lie. Bill, uh, uh, Billy Morrow, I, I bucked heads with him. He says, well, there's got to be some mass... It's got to be hidden there somewhere. I, I said, well, they went through Iraq with a fine-tooth comb and they haven't found it yet. And they didn't want... Well, look, that was the... When the Cheney and all the guys got together to determine what propaganda they would use to sell this war to the American people. That's what they came up with. Weapons of mass destruction. Which was never found. It had nothing to do with ever, you know, Saddam Hussein having them. That, that was the best propaganda tool that yeah. they could use right. to sell the war to the American people. And what people. about the nonsense, uh, you know, with all these... Uh, Flag waving tea baggers, you know, uh, uh, support our troops because they're protecting our freedom here in the United States. They're protecting our freedom. But when they come back, don't take care of them medically at the VA. But they don't take care of them. They only send them there. It's like a one way ticket, like they're kamikazes. Like they send them there to get their legs and arms blown off or die come home in a body bag, but they don't want to take care of them when they return. But the point is, what I'm saying about the flag-waving teabaggers, Yankee Doodle Dan, you know, us, uh, they're protecting our freedom. What freedom? It, our borders are not threatened in the United States. The freedom to shop. Nobody's invading the U.S. Yeah, the freedom to shop. That's the only you know, freedom we have. That's another propaganda uh, uh, the conservatives scheme. are very good at selling propaganda, aren't they? Propaganda scheme. Yeah. Yeah. So that wraps it up, right? That wraps it up. Thank you for joining us for this week's uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth. We'll see you next week. <coughs> it's amazing how fast the weeks go by and um, yeah, how many shows we've chalked up under our belt. Now, uh, remember, the new issue of Newsletter Censored is hot off the pancake griddle. Go, like Billy Morrow said earlier, go to NewsletterCensored.com and get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work now. 
You need newsletters censored. We are living in the end times. You need newsletters censored to learn how to defeat the conservative. So we'll see you next time. Uh, you think we should? Uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll tell you later on. Uh, say so long to these people. So long, people. This has been a Megalife 21 production.